SOLIDWORKS Tech Tips presented to you by CAD Dimensions. So first off, the first tech tip of today is to introduce an underutilized tool within SOLIDWORKS which is called Part Reviewer. Part Reviewer allows you to automate the uh, investigation of uh, features through your uh, feature manager. It gives you a more systematic method to navigate through your uh, feature managers as opposed to having to select this one pixel blue bar right here and to scroll up and down which is what most of you are used to right now so using the part reviewer which is located right under the evaluate tab right here this gives you a few buttons to navigate through your feature manager so for one I can jump to the beginning this allows you to jump right to the beginning of your uh, of your feature manager then you can now uh, move through your features by just stepping forward one by one. Now an added feature to using this uh, part reviewer is that you can rename your features while you navigate through your feature manager. You don't have to actually physically come in here and find and rename those features. You can actually just edit the feature name right here and now you can just put in a new name for this uh, for this feature you can also date and stamp any changes that you've made uh, whether it is to the feature or even the feature name so in this case I'm going to say change feature name and that's it Alright, so once you're done with that, you can just save and close and then you can move forward with your feature manager as well. Now another advantage is that not only you can um, date and stamp changes, you can also add in additional information. So for example, let's say you've come to a, a roadblock and you're not really sure how to build a certain feature or use a certain feature and you've either contacted Cat Dimensions Tech Support. You've come across a blog that explains how to do it or you found a YouTube video that shows you uh, steps on how to create that feature well uh, typically you you learn how to do it you build that feature you use it and then three months later you tend to forget it so one thing that I uh, try to do is keep a record of all those uh, things that I find online so next time you do this come into that feature use your part reviewer and make a note of that blog or um, that YouTube video that you found and then down the road you can always uh, refer back to it okay so the next uh, feature or sorry the next tech tip that I wanted to show you today is uh, creating virtual shops so virtual shops is essentially uh, the, a point where uh, two entities meet started here so essentially where a point where two entities meet so essentially so if I have this line right here and this line right here it would meet at some point and I want to create that point that is what we call a virtual shop now the original method of creating a virtual shop is essentially control selecting those two entities and then just selecting the point tool and it will create the virtual shop for you there which is now selectable and you can dimension to now, the thing about virtual shop is typically you are creating it to dimension to it. So, for example, maybe a distance, or you might run into a problem where the entity that you're um, intersecting with is not as clear as, as what you're looking at right here. In cases like that, you can actually use the smart dimension tool to create that um, the virtual shop. So, if you select your smart dimension tool, and if you right click any entity, there would be an option here which says find intersection. This will allow you to find an intersection with any en entity that you select. So for in this case, if I select this entity, it will bring up the virtual shop and one more click and it will toggle right to my dimension, uh, my dimension tool as well. So two methods for you uh, to choose from to create virtual shops. So the next uh, tech tip that I wanted to show you today is using 
uh, sketch colors. So as many of you know, uh, when it comes to sketching and building uh, parts in SolidWorks, it always has this pale gray look in the beginning unless you um, uh, add some different appearances or colors to it. Uh, so typically, you know, a lot of times uh, you're recoloring your part, but you're not really recoloring your sketches. So why not? This allows you to clearly see your sketches. So for an example here, uh, I'm trying to create uh, a sweep using these two sketches right here. So when I come into my sweep tool and I select um, sweep, it's asking me for my profile, asking me for my um, my path. It might not be very easy to select them. Well, to make your life easier, just right click your sketch and say sketch color and add a color that is going to pop out and you'll be able to clearly see those two sketches. So I'm going to right click this as well, say sketch color and I'm going to add a color here. Now you can clearly see the contrast between those two sketches. Coming here, I can clearly see that this is my profile right here and this is my path right here. Okay, and I'm able to create that feature. The next tech tip I have uh, for you today is uh, assembly visualization. So assembly visualization is a tool that again lies within your evaluate uh, tab assembly visualization it allows you to clearly visualize um, all the different parts you have in your assembly using some different types of uh, properties such as quantity mass or you can even pick some different some different properties such as density total weight whatever it is that you choose to represent your parts this gives you a clear idea uh, of what lies within your assembly because it colors, it, it uh, adds a, a color contrast to your assembly. So um, this really helps with uh, assemblies with a lot of parts. Uh, so now you can clearly see, so for example here I'm going to reorganize my uh, my parts using their different mass, their different mass and I can actually now clearly see uh, what the mass is for my different parts um, so anything below um, below a certain mass will show up in red anything above a certain mass will show up in blue um, I can also uh, uh, arrange this using number of uh, the quantity that I have in here so I, now I can actually clearly see all the uh, screws that I have in this uh, in this assembly right here because I've uh, really toggled in all the uh, nuts and washes for this and I can also add in a few more hardware in here and now it actually clearly shows me all my tools so I know that I'm not missing any uh, additional hardware in there one additional feature that I don't really have access to right now because I don't have uh, EPDM is that this uh, assembly visualization will, will have you will have the ability to show whether a part is checked in or checked out or is currently being used, you have to add. You have to have EPDM to be able to do that, and you can just add that as an extra column, and it will show you exactly the state of that current part. Very good tool again to visualize your assemblies. So the last tech tip I have for you today is um, is view alignments. So a lot of times you are adding your views. Uh, using projected views so in this case if I come in here if I say create a projected view uh, or instead if I used a section view uh, which it's really tied into that to that uh, part that I'm that I'm looking at so for example if I create this section view right here um, just like that but what happens if I want to reposition this section view to a different place? Well, all you really need to do is right click that view, come into alignment, and break alignment. So this allows you to move that view wherever you choose to move it to. But what if you want to realign this view to something else? So let's say for example, I bring in another view here. Uh, let's say if I bring in my right view, you can see clearly it's too big for my um, 
for my sheet here so I'm gonna create a, what we call a break view and I'm gonna say break so like this so like this here I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and now if I want to position this uh, section view within my break view uh, that is definitely possible but now when I move this around which you know you're gonna have to uh, it doesn't really move with it and you're gonna have to move both well an easy method to fix this is just right click that view come into alignment and say align uh, horizontal by origin so you just select the, the view that you're looking for and now this view is will always be aligned to that uh, to this right view right this right view here okay so that is all the tech tips I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this thank you and have a great day don't forget to check us out on YouTube Twitter Facebook and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below